Hey there, do you want to help end the stigma that surrounds mental illness and borderline personality disorder? Well then, don't be like Onision. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And not only do I try to do some videos about my experience and topics going on in the YouTube community to see what we can learn from them, I also like doing videos about the stigma that surrounds mental illness and specific mental illnesses as well. But anyways, if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I absolutely hate making videos about Onision. He is this thing that just feeds off of the attention that he gets. And I do my best not to cover him, not to make videos about him. Usually it's like easy views and stuff like that. But just knowing how much he loves it, I hate doing it. But some stuff went down and I felt the need to talk about it in case anybody heard it, in case anybody was impacted by it, because the, the stigma around borderline personality disorder specifically really bothers me. And I'll dive more into that a little bit later in this video. But anyways, to give you some context, I'll link this whole thing down below if you want to go through the nightmare of listening to the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I had some people DMing me about uh, Onision being on Killstream Live, I, I believe the podcast or live stream is. And it's like three hours long, man. It is like three hours. And I am a busy, busy dude. I do not have the time to listen to three hours of Onision. Um, so anyways, I, uh, I was doing some work and I just decided to listen to like the first part. I think I listened like the first 30 minutes or so. Um, but anyways, I heard this part, this clip I'm about to share with you, um, and I was like, oh, God. So, again, let, let's 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 learn from this, and let's do our best not to be like Onision. Anyway, so she did that, and we were already, like, you know, uh, warmed up to each other because of uh, everything that happened that day and everything that was just, like, the vibe was good or whatever. Um, so, yeah, no, then she did that, and then way down the line she's pissed off at me and i because i called out people with bpd i said i never want to be associated with someone who has bpd again because when sarah was here i had locked myself in my garage while i slept because i was afraid she was going to kill me because there's a certain vibe that people get who have bpd when you piss them off so first off first off like it's probably for the best that uh you know these women were able to get away from onision especially if he doesn't like people with borderline personality disorder. So, ladies out there, if you have borderline personality disorder, the good news is that Onision is not going to try to date you. All right? But anyways, yeah, I wanted to discuss this because this is one of the most highly stigmatized mental illness. And I know a lot of you here watching this, you know, you struggle with your own mental health issues, whether it be depression, anxiety, ADHD, um, trauma, whatever it is, right? And something that you know, bugs me sometimes is that people pick and choose which mental health issues they want to care about, right? Like the ones I just listed, like depression and anxiety, those are the most common ones. And sometimes I see people and they are just like, yeah, mental health, mental health awareness, all this stuff. But then it's like, oh, but that disorder over there, nah, not that one. And I think when we talk about mental health awareness and decreasing the stigma, it should cover all mental health issues because we're all struggling there's all different factors and when it comes to borderline personality disorder specifically i started becoming really passionate about it um years ago when i was working at the drug and alcohol rehab center i actually had no idea what this disorder was um until i started working with clients at the rehab who had it it was a dual diagnosis treatment facility i'm not a licensed therapist or anything like that i was uh, a lead alumni coordinator but i did groups for all the clients and I would do one-on-ones with them and I would help support their recovery after they left. And part of that was like, yo, take care of your mental health issues, right? So I learned about borderline personality disorder and I saw kind of like, uh, you know, the symptoms play out in real life with the, you know, emotional regulation issues and the ups and downs and everything. But for some reason, I was always able to connect with uh, the clients who had BPD. Like I was just like, okay, like something that I do when talking to anybody with mental illness like 
I, I understand that, you know, same thing with me and my, you know, addiction recovery and my depression and my anxiety and my childhood trauma. Like, it's a sickness, right? It's not a person being a bad person. It is a sickness. But when I first got really bothered by this and started to see the stigma was working with therapists at that treatment center. There were so many therapists, like we would do like our morning meetings and stuff and they would pass clients around like, oh, this one has BPD. I, I hate working with clients who have borderline personality disorder. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, you're a, you're a therapist. Like you got into this profession to help people and now you're gonna pick and choose which people you work with. Like, in my opinion, like that's not how any of this should work. And I started to empathize with him. Like I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine someone being like, oh, that guy, Chris, he has this disorder, you know, whatever it is. I don't want to work with him. Right? Like, because here's the thing that I've learned in my seven and a half years sober, in my seven and a half years working on my mental health is that there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Everybody can get better. Everybody can recover. Although there's not a cure for addiction or borderline personality disorder or other forms of mental illness, those might last you your entire life, there are ways to manage it and live an amazing life. And I'm living proof of that. I've been clean and sober seven and a half years. My depression and anxiety, 90% of the time, they're under control. And that's why I make these videos to try to share that with you. So seeing you know mental health professionals not wanting to work with people with borderline personality disorder, that really bothered me. And that's why one of the reasons I try to educate people about it. And I've read a lot of books about BPD just so I can understand more and understand what helps borderline personality disorder so I can understand people who have this even more. So when I see somebody like Onision just on a, you know, very publicly saying this kind of stuff, it, it bothers me. And I think one of the first things that helps people empathize a little with those who have BPD is understanding the causes of it. Okay. Like when you start to understand the causes of borderline personality disorder, rather than just looking at the person and their symptoms and, you know, some of their behaviors, it helps you empathize and understand. So one of the first causes of borderline personality disorder is genetics, all right? There's some science around this where BPD can be passed down through generations, all right? That's not the person's fault. You know what I mean? Like if, if, if a person was, you know, born with any kind of physical illness or disease, right? Like... It's the same thing with a lot of forms of mental illness and borderline personality disorder is one of those, okay? So one of the causes of BPD is trauma and there is scientific evidence that trauma can be passed down through generations, all right? Because trauma can affect your genes. So you get traumatized, affects your genes, you get the hibbity-dibbity on, you have a kid, that kid might develop trauma or a lot of anxiety based on the genes associated with trauma, right? But even more saddening to me is one of the primary causes of borderline personality disorder and most of the people I've met who struggle with this disorder, their BPD stems from childhood trauma and abuse, all right? A lot of people with BPD grew up in very abusive households. All right, um, we're talking about emotional abuse, verbal abuse, you know, a lot of what the symptoms of BPD come from is this kind of chaotic relationship with caregivers, okay? And um, something I've been learning more about is different attachment styles. So when somebody grows up in that type of household, it affects their relationships later on because one of the other symptoms of borderline personality disorder is this intense fear of abandonment, right? So you combine this fear of abandonment with emotional regulation issues, it makes it hard for people to be in relationships. So when I see somebody like Onision just like talking all this trash about somebody with BPD, it's like you need to understand that there are things that might be, you know, genetic or stemming from childhood trauma. And especially because somebody like Onision 
his, so one of the excuses that he likes to use is his childhood abuse, his childhood trauma. So we need to understand that about other people. And don't get me wrong, like I said, it is a great thing. The less, the less people that, bo that uh, Onision will date, the better for this entire planet, okay? But I want all of you out there to learn from this and not be like Onision and start understanding borderline personality disorder a little bit more. The video I did yesterday on Ozark, like check it out. Like this is one of the reasons why I, I try to, promote people being educated about these disorders, you might fall in love with somebody with borderline personality disorder. And if you love them and you want that relationship to work, you will educate yourself and see how to be with somebody who has borderline personality disorder. Now, just like somebody like Onision, this does not give you a pass to be a jerk and not work on yourself. Borderline personality disorder is treatable. And one of the best forms of therapy for it is something called dialectical behavioral therapy. I've had a lot of you, you rewired soldiers out there, leave comments down below and say that DBT helps save your life and your BPD is under control. So anybody out there who struggles with borderline personality disorder, like you don't got to listen to me. Look at the comments. Look at the people saying that, yeah, this thing works, you know, because DBT is highly highly around managing emotions, right? Noticing these emotions and these thought patterns that are arising in your relationships and working on those symptoms. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I just wanted to make this video real quick. Again, if you wanna help decrease the stigma around mental illness as a whole, not just specific ones, don't be like Onision, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thanks to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at therewiredsoul.com, as well as everybody who gets merch from the merch store. You're all awesome, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.